What about warm front? Uh, man, I could talk about warm front. I've 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 talked about it before, but warm front is a fucked up map too. But it has potential. But again, it needs to be. It would need to be completely, I think, remade by someone new as a new map. And just have inspiration from it. Um, is Fastlane salvage? Okay, yeah, I could talk about Fastlane too. Um, why did people used to play Gravel Pit? Because when TF2 first came out, there were like six maps in the game, and Gravel Pit was one of them. That's why. People used to play Two Fort. Like, they didn't know what they were doing. And when they learned how the competitive game actually worked, um, they realized that Gravel Pit was not a fun map to play. It was not a map that people liked to practice. And it was not something that was consistent with other competitive maps in the experience and therefore was sort of the odd man out. And yeah, that's why. And it became stale, I think, to people. I don't know. Some people might argue that Gravel Pit is an interesting map because it has more viable strategies, but cheesy strategies like are not necessarily something that you want to... It's not necessarily worth putting a map in just because you get to see cheesy strategies every once in a while. I don't know. I feel like that's not enough merit for a map. We need a map that's five spires suspended in space. Maybe. Didn't Valve say some comp maps were going to be updated, but they didn't. Um, Valve updated CP Badlands, actually. So that was a great example of why um, a pro version is a bad idea and unnecessary. Because I simply had to tell Valve, these are the changes that we want to see on Badlands. And they were like, okay, we'll do it. And then they made the changes. And now Badlands is a far better map than it was when it came out. And we don't need a pro version that's separating the the player base um, and has a bunch of artistic license that some random map maker thought he could make and went too far with. Um, let's see. Would I consider streaming map building? Uh, maybe. The thing is, I don't actually know how to make maps. Cardinal in Eternal Limbo? No. Um, if I'd be stuck in a time loop, would I rather be stuck in a match that I would get pounded on or one that I, one that I pounded on? Of course I'd rather be the one pounding. Am I still having personal issues? Um, I, I haven't checked, but I think so. Um, alright. Have I thought of a map that demands a completely different meta? Um, I think that, uh... I think that maps are one of the best ways to change the meta. As you can see, compare the way that you have to play to play something like Granary or Badlands to the way that you play something like Sunshine or Process. The map itself has promoted certain play styles. Um, it's promoted more aggression and more like team flooding and you know that kind of stuff. Whereas Badlands and Granary really punish for chokes. It's, it's a bit different. Most people don't know how to play Badlands or Granary because it comes from an era where you had to actually have discipline pushing chokes and that kind of stuff. And most people play in that modern style with the modern maps where anything is pushable at any time and you don't really need to be careful about it. So that's why you see me ban Badlands and Granary because only uh, only uh, old school and like really good players know how to play those maps. Whereas new players are... They're way stunted on those maps. New meaning anyone who started playing competitive TF2 in the last, like, three years. Honestly. Are maps like Granary Pro okay when we don't really know what we want? Um, I think Granary Pro has, has taught us what we want already. I think we know what we want from Granary Pro. And we can start uh, pruning it down to what the essential changes are that we should be proposing to Valve to see if they can make. But the problem is that map I just it's it's gone too far where it's like you forgot you forgot what regular granary was like. Um, and same with viaduct. You might think it'd be simple to like just make regular viaduct into um, product or like have a few small updates 
to satisfy the competitive scene. But now that we're so used to product, just try playing regular Viaduct. You will be, you will be so disoriented. There's so much extra clutter and props you can crash into. The the slight like sight lines have been changed. The visuals of it entirely. The sight lines have on this like catwalk are majorly changed. It's just it's a different map, and there's it's hard to um, it's hard to reconcile the two versions or compromise them. If I could say what I thought the the essential changes from product would be, I would say number one would be the connector. I feel like the connector adds a lot of dynamics to the map with the flank. Um, other than that, the ammo pack on the point, I don't think that's there in the regular version. Other than that, um, fixing a lot of the clipping issues. And then that would be like the essential viaduct changes. But the sniper sight lines, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the sniper sight lines are actually justifiable. That's, that's, or the way that it's been done. That's the thing. A lot of the changes in like a pro version, they maybe were trying to fix a problem and they could have fixed the problem with a minimal amount of changes, but instead they, they took it too far. And now we're used to that like excessive change, but it might not have actually been the, the right change to begin with. So that's that's why pro versions are problematic, is because a lot of artistic license is taken on maps, and you you change things beyond what needed to happen, and that's just kind of uh, I don't know. To me, that's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. They never fix the rails on Badlands. Uh, I forgot to request that actually. I should do that. In an endless train of defeat, you learn much more. I disagree. How come all the maps take out the snow? So, um, that's another fallacy with pro versions. A lot of people think that somehow snow creates bad FPS. Um, but the reality was that uh, weather effects were the, were the culprit. And I think when they created Pro Viaduct or Warmfront, they wanted to remove the weather effects but when they removed the snow, they decided they'd retexture the whole map too. Um, I think some people think that visibility is better, but I don't think that that's convincing. Um, and some people even tried to argue that it was done exclusively for colorblind players. All right, no one gives a fuck about colorblind players. Like they exist, sure, but w that's not why it happened. Like it sucks that maybe snow is a little bit harder for them to see on, but no one's designing maps for colorblind players. That's just not a thing that's happening. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Snow, I think snow maps should exist. I think there should be a snow map. I'm surprised there isn't. But it's because people have... They've created an enemy out of snow maps when the, uh, snow isn't the enemy. I guess. Thoughts on snake water? Uh, pretty good map. What's the trend with removing snow? Oh, I just talked about that. Um... What map do I think needs a huge rework? Uh, I've been talking about it. Like, Yukon, this map. Okay, I haven't really been able to talk about this because I've just been talking about chat. All right, let's talk about what's actually wrong with this map. All right. Let's start on last. Last is the most problematic of this whole map. Um, every choke point has an, a super inconvenient overhang. There's no way to get in on last in sort of a uh, aggressive fashion because of this ceiling. Like, why? Every single entrance has this. Every single one. Entrance, uh, n you, need, you need to be able to get into last and you can't. Other problems, sniper sight lines. It is impossible to avoid a sniper if you are, if the sniper is right here. I mean, there is an entrance over here, but this entrance is the smallest and, you know, also has a massive overhang on it. So, the sniper sight lines are problem number one, or the overhangs are problem number one, sniper sight lines are problem number two. Those combined means that every time you come into this last point, you have to Uber at the doorways every time. Imagine
closing the distance from there to here where the other medic's going to be with his with his second uber ready to pop to counter pop and having to deal with a sentry gun or a heavy or all the other players spamming and juggling you it's it's basically impossible pushing this last is a nightmare um the only way to really break it open in history has been sniper you have to run a sniper and then it turns into sniper versus sniper and that's not a fight that you know you really can guarantee anything's gonna ever happen in um I think the problem on last is not as bad as before since back then since there was no medic scout speed. I guess slightly, but I think these are fundamental flaws. Um, okay, other problems with the map. Um, so yeah, I think if they fix those sight lines and the overhangs, like maybe put a little bit more cover or adjust to these walls somewhat, like maybe move this wall, like extend this wall a little bit more or something. I don't know. Maybe... Just, like, pull this pillar a little bit out so that it blocks this. I don't know, but, like, these sight lines are, are, not, are not allowed. You can't have this. This is kind of annoying because you can't splash this, but in a way that could help the offense to make this less tunnel-esque. Because it is a tunnel, and we just talked about tunnels. But at least there's a, a wall that you can't get uh, splashed on, and it's somewhat short somewhat it's not it's not really a super long tunnel um the same issues sort of continue when it comes to pushing out of last on this one you're like forced to come through low ground and this very small doorway i'd be curious to see what would happen if you just opened this entirely but that would create a sight line from here, which is why this exists. Because you would be able to see into last from this platform. So something would have to be changed. Um, what I think might work would be uh, maybe making this door open, uh, make an opening here or something. So that you could have a little bit more options for flooding out. Right now... Uh, you just get spammed from this high ground spot and it's really hard to get through and this is really narrow. But if you could uh, have two options for going here or here, I think people would get through this much more freely and there'd be a better flow between the points. Um, this flank, if you can even call it that, is a fucking tunnel. This would be fine if this w if the entire area was like a room that was, you know, maybe it starts right here and then it turns into a room that has a slightly higher ceiling, it'd be more like a uh, s uh, sewer or something, or um, IT on on process. Um, but tunnel, man, that's not a flank. Like, you, you're not going to fight in a tunnel. Like, why? Why would anyone ever take a flank fight in a tunnel? A big room, like, you know, maybe we can make something happen here, maybe we can dodge around, maybe we fight over some positioning. But there's no positioning in a fucking tunnel. Right? What, am I going to be here instead of here? Like, it's a fucking tunnel, man. Alright. Um, I think this choke is is actually one of my favorites. This, like, pre-lobby type thing. Um, I actually wish there were more maps like Granary, where the, the cap point was in a uh, frame. I actually think that's one of the most interesting dynamics there is. Because it's like the ultimate sort of tug of war. Like, no team truly owns this point. Whoever controls the choke point better owns the point. And I've always liked that dynamic on Granary. Um, I just think it was kind of a shame that the rest of Granary didn't really f highlight that so well. So that's another um, that's another map design thing I'd like to like pluck from um, from Granary and reuse in another map someday. Um, so what else? What else? Uh, okay. So the one one problem is that this is really the only option to push because of the way the map is set up. If you could bait the point a little with that frame thing that I was talking about and pull people more into this domain, I feel like this area is very underused. That'd be nice. And then uh I don't know. I don't I don't particularly like this that this turned into like height 
Um, well, it's actually probably better for the map that you can push height here. So I guess this is fine. Okay, here's another massive problem with the map. Um, the yard. The yard is too open. It's unholdable. Every, every entrance it is just an open skybox. It's impossible to hold this because the moment you set up here, like say you wanted to set up a hold right here, it actually looks like a pretty good spot, right? You're just going to get bombed, and the only way you can get out is this tiny little door, right? So th there's you can't control the yard. That's the problem. Um, you can't hold the sky. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe if uh, Thermal Thruster was a thing back then, and you could, like, be hovering in the sky or some shit to, like, intercept people, <laughs> uh, maybe it would be, be a thing, but it's too open. Skybox is too open. Skybox too open. And over here, skybox is too open. You can't hold any of these three. Not a single one of these can be held. Because they can all be f uh, overwhelmed by deep bombs. So what I would propose is um, changing the yard to have only one open choke. So I think that the one open choke should be... I want to say this main one. And then the other ones would have uh, like land arches or just some sort of choke up here. Um, same up there on the cliff, so that you could not fly through. The only one you could fly through would be the middle one. That way, you could have a little bit more confidence to hold in a position like this, and um, and not, you know, be forced to just be like holding the entire sky of the entire map from left to right. But instead, you could focus your attention up here. I think maybe another height position would be nice. I think maybe a, a ledge or something right there would be kind of cool. Um, but the cliff does a pretty good job, honestly. You'd probably just see scouts like trying to control this cliff. Um, I think it'd also be nice if there was a little bit more connectivity between the platform and the ground. Maybe a, r a, a ramp right here. I think that'd be nice. I think there is a jump you could do. I'm trying to remember. Oh, there's a scout jump. You can you can slide up this. I think that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know if you can... Well, let me see if I can parkour my way up. Mm. Okay, you can jump up, actually. I guess that's not too bad. That's a, a bit of a skill jump. I don't mind skill jumps. That's actually fine. But it's not obvious. I don't think in my entire, like, seasons of playing this map I ever saw anyone use that, to be honest. Um, but I guess it exists, so it's not as bad. Though I, I honestly don't think that this fence should exist, probably. I'm not sure. I feel like the fence is kind of a problem. Nowadays, I just feel like maps try to connect the yard a lot better. Um... This is this is a, an element on Badlands. It's it's kind of unique to Badlands and Granary, where the flank is like really isolated. In modern maps, they tend to be sort of one big area, and you can kind of rotate around between the flanks more. But on Granary, for example, you have Lunchbox. It's like this isolated box, and it's just separate from everything, and that's the flank. And on Badlands, you have Diag, and it has this entire house and it's just off on the other side of the map and that's the flank it's like a separate component of the map but if you look at any other map like um, sunshine or snake water or process it's so easy to rotate between the the areas and you can be watching one and then watching the other but whereas on badlands and like granary you can't do that you have to really commit to watching the flanks um okay so if you made yard more holdable that would help this map a lot as well. The mid is actually one of the most popular mids I've ever heard of. It has a lot of variety in terms of like um, high ground around the peripherals and high ground on the mid and all that. There is a bit of a vision problem but I'm not sure if it's if it's actually a problem. It's just kind of a unique flavor of the map and I think I'm okay with it. Though I would be curious to see how this map would be if uh, maybe the point was a little bit more open. I don't know. Like, maybe you could walk through 
like a, a doorway here, but uh, it's probably not necessary. It's probably good as is, though it's very frustrating that there's a lot of cracks in the roof. Like all these little tiny little ledges and cracks. It's kind of a nightmare for soldiers, and I don't like it at all. I think it should be more like um, maps like Metalworks or Process, where the roof is like flat panels. Um, but then I think that I think that's basically it for how to fix this map. That's what I would do. And then from there you just have to play test it and see what happens, I guess. Is anyone still listening to me? Eh, who knows? I'm having fun explaining it. Review CP well next? I could. I should talk about Metalworks. Metalworks is a good map. I don't really have any uh I don't have any changes that I would propose on Metalworks. Metalworks is actually one of my favorite maps.